Hi folks, Bill still here with 3D Chameleon and uh, you've asked for it, so we're going to do it today. We're going to install the 3D Chameleon on this P1P and I'm going to install it in the new Mode 3 configuration, which means you won't see anything from the front of the machine. Everything is going to be installed on the back, but I have a new one specifically for this video. Um, what I'd like you to do is go over to Printables and search for 3D Chameleon, just one word and then P1P, and you'll find the uh, files for this. And on those files, you're gonna um, download four different files here. Uh, we have, first off, the P1P switch mount. Uh, you'll notice it looks like this. It has holes on the back here. That's gonna actually mount the switch right back here in the corner. We also have the spool holder for the P1P. Actually, this is just our generic spool holder. Um, there are two of these, and there's one additional mount here. We're going to mount the 3D Chameleon to this, and this is going to attach to our spool holder. One other thing you need for the P1P is if you go out to Amazon or your favorite uh, hardware store, you're gonna buy three eight millimeter uh, by 300 uh, millimeter rods. These are stainless steel rods. They're going to go into your spool holder just like this so there's one there one there and we'll install these on the other end here and then the last one is what your spools go into and that just sits up on top of here so we'll squeeze this together so there you can see the entire spool holder so and then what's going to happen is once we open the 3D Chameleon here, this is actually going to mount and hang right off the front here. Um, and that'll sit behind your printer. And then the tubes will go up and feed into your printer from the behind here. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, so you're going to need a few tools for this install. Um, you're going to need the tools that came with your P1P. Uh, and in particular, on the back side of the printer here is... It's already been removed off of this one, um, but it's the where the PTFE tube feeds in. There's a little guide there. And that's just held on by two uh, hex screws that are two millimeters. So you're going to use your two millimeter wrench that came with the printer to remove those. You're also going to need a 2.5 millimeter uh, because we are going to attach our screw, uh, our uh, switch holder to those same screws. Now they'll just fit right in there. So it's just a just a it just happens to be that our head is 2.5 as opposed to their head being 2.0. Uh, the other thing that you're going to need is a small Phillips screwdriver. I'm using my CNC, Simi CNC uh, uh, screwdriver that I got a few years ago. And we're going to use that to hold the switch onto here. And that's going to mount completely hidden inside of the top of the printer here. Those are the only tools that you need except for maybe the side cutter and the knife that's actually included in the box here. So let's talk about what's in the box. Let's go ahead and open it up. Move my tools out of the way. So once you get your 3D Chameleon, we'll open it up and you're gonna find some uh, uh, documentation here. The most important thing is my email address right on my business card there. Always feel free to email me with any questions that you have. You're gonna find some packing material. We'll just toss that aside. And inside here, we have a bag, a bubble wrap bag with a 3D Chameleon in it. It is already installed, uh, assembled inside of this bag. So we'll just take that and toss that. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and take this apart here, not take it apart, but we're gonna unwrap it and we're gonna go ahead and test it before we actually install it. Uh, the other things you'll find in the bag here or in the box here are the utility knife, a switch this is your limit switch that we're going to put on the inside of here this is how the 3d chameleon and the printer talk to each other basically what happens is is the 3d chameleon's tool change g code will command the the uh, extruder to come over and touch our switch when it touches this switch those uh, that sequence of commands that it's touching will actually get sent to our electronics our electronics will then do what it's told to do and that's all done through this switch We'll have a, uh, a bundle of zip ties. There's two sizes. There's large and small ones in here. 
we have our power supply. Uh, this is just going to be a standard 12 volt wall wart. So I'm going to pull this out of here. You can see it's just a standard 12 volt wall wart. And then the last thing that's in here is a bag of additional accessories for mounting to various printers. Um, the important thing that's going to be in this bag for us is there's two very tiny screws in here that we're going to use to screw the switch onto the switch mount. And then there are four 35 millimeter long screws that we're going to use to mount the 3D Chameleon to the, uh, the, the mount that we printed for the P1P. So that's all we have in the box. So let's go ahead and set that aside and start doing this. We're gonna go ahead and uh, open up our switch here. Well, didn't cut, they didn't cut the notches deep enough here. There we go. So we have our switch. Now our switch has the switch itself and a cable. And we're going to be running this cable uh, up to the switch with the white end at the switch and the black end at the uh, our electronics uh, But for now, we're just going to plug it in Actually, but you know what before I do that how about if I just mount it to this? So the way we mount this is we're going to take the switch the switch is actually going to go inside this little pocket here So that's going to mount Basically just like that And we have the connector here on the front, I'm going to take these two little tiny, very tiny 2.5 millimeter by 6 millimeter long screws, and we're going to just thread them right into the plastic through the two holes in the switch. Now we're using the two holes on the switch on the bottom, not the ones that's on the back side here. It's the, the bottom ones here. They, you'll see that they line up with the holes in the switch mount. So this might take a little bit of force to put these screws in, but that's okay. Once you put them in, tighten it down, you're good to go. There we go. So there I have my switch mounted. This is the back side of the switch on the outside. The button, the lever is on the bottom. And what's going to happen is this is going to mount inside of here using these two holes where the uh, the clip that holds your PTFE tube was originally connected. We're going to use those exact same two holes. To mount that, we have these M3 by 10 screws. There's two black ones in the bag here. They might be silver, but I think, I think they're black in most of the kits. In the back here are two holes. We're going to take these and thread them in here. I need my 2.5 millimeter to do that. We'll thread them all the way in and out just to cut some threads into the back of this. There's one. two so there I have just the two screws that's just created the threads that the screws will go into I can now take these back out and these screws are going to go through the same two holes that we have on the back here now remember you need to remove the two that were on there from the factory that are holding the little uh, clip for the end of your PTFE tube. We don't need that in this installation. So I'm just gonna put these two screws in, just start them into the holes here. We don't, we're not gonna mount this just yet. I'm just gonna start it into the holes so that when we do mount it, everything is already lined up. And what I like to do is just have them just a little bit into the box, into the, through the metal all the way. Because when we put this in place, these holes are going to line up over the top of those screws. And it's going to make it really easy to line these up to, to install the switch. But now that we have this, let's go ahead and, uh, let me go ahead and open this 
knife up. We're going to need that in a little bit. We have our 3D Chameleon. Um, what I'm going to do is kind of unwrap it a little bit here. So inside of here we have the what we call the Y adapter. The Y adapter has a piece of PTFE on the end of it. Uh, we're going to take this piece out and we're going to attach it directly to uh, the piece that's coming out of your printer already because that's where we're going to start feeding our filament in. We have some rather long cables. We will trim these to length a little bit later on, but right now we'll just leave them at this length. We actually have the 3D Chameleon itself with the two stepper motors. Um, you can disconnect these motors, but be careful when you put it back together. You want to make sure you have them in the right order. Uh, for example, if you reverse these, the machine will still function, um, except it won't be doing what you think it'll do. It might run the stepper motor for the gear, the, the, the color selector instead of the extruder and vice versa. Um, so if you see something strange with it happening, once we go through this self-test, I'm going to show you in a minute here, um, then you need to reverse the motors. Make sure you always, always uh, unplug the power when you're doing that, when you're switching those cables. So we have this. We're going to take our switch. Our black cable, I mean our, our, um, our switch cable, has a green wire, a black wire, and a red wire. The red wire is going to go towards the middle of the the unit here. So in this picture, it's going to go this way towards my left, your right. And the green wire is always going to go on the outside. And an easy way to remember this is if you look at our wires, the red wire and the red wire and the red wire are all on the very same edge in the, at our connectors. So we're just going to plug that in just like that. Once I've got it plugged in, I can take the white end and attach it to my switch. And it only goes in one way. It's keyed, so it only can go in the one way. And we're gonna take some power. So I have my little power brick here, but I also happen to already have some available on my desk here. So we'll plug that in. When I turn this on, I should have a green light on the inside of here, and you can see that green light right there. And what I can do is I can press and hold the button and I should see and feel the selector motor, which is the one that has the big bearing on it and the cam in the middle here. I should see that vibrate as long as I'm holding this. And it is. So at every half second or so, it pulses. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that uh, this is the motor that's vibrating and not the extruder motor. Okay. So the first step in this installation for this particular printer is we need to make sure we're in mode three, but by default from the factory, we ship our units in mode two. But for this hidden install where, where we have this extra long length of tubing that we're gonna be using, we wanna make sure we switch that over to mode three. To do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the button and we're gonna listen for 10 pulses. And the 10th pulse we let off. The machine will respond with a one pulse response, a two pulse response, or a three pulse response. Those three responses indicate which mode it is currently in. And, you, and by the way, that's how you switch to it as well. So I'm gonna do 10 pulses here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And it responded with one. So now it's in mode one. We're now gonna to switch to mode two with 10 pulses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it responded with two. And now we're going to switch to mode three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it's responded with three. So now it's properly in mode three. To use this, to test this, what we're going to do is seven pulses. Seven pulses always homes the unit. So, and I heard it home. Okay, so let's do that home again and you'll be able to see it on the video here if, if, I, if I home this. Right now it's up here at the, uh, at the uh, 12 o'clock position, but I need it over here at the three o'clock position. To home it, I'm gonna do seven pulses. Three, four, five, six, seven. So there, pulsed and it ground, you heard it grinding a little bit there, 
that's it's indicating that it's found its mechanical limits at the lowest end. So that's at the three o'clock position here. Now in mode three, the way this works is one, two, three, or four pulses tell it to switch to colors one, two, three, or four. It remembers what the last one is. Now the difference between mode two and mode three, mode two would just automatically load and unload the filament. Um, it would automatically unload it 10 inches and reload it 11 inches. But for this installation, we need a much longer distance. 10 inches is for when you have the Y adapter right at the hot end, okay? That's typical, or right at the extruder. That's typically the way our installation is. But in this case, we're, we're asking to go much longer. So the way it works is to, to load filament one, I have one pulse. Now, when I did the one pulse, it didn't do anything. It didn't move. It's waiting for me to press the button again. Now, the idea here is that the second button press is going to continuously move the extruder for as long as I want. And our G code is set up in the number of seconds. Basically, every inch takes one second. So if you want to move it 10 inches, you hold the button for 10 seconds. So let's try that. One, 1,000, two, 1,000. And it's actually rotating. You can, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but it's actually rotating this motor. As long as I'm holding the button, it's rotating this motor. When I got the filament, when I get the filament to where I want it, I let off. And it stops and it switches and lets go of the filament so that the printer can take over. Now, to switch to filament number two, I'm gonna do two pulses. One, two. So now it's switched back to one. It's ready for me to unload number one because it knows it just loaded one, so it needs to unload it. Now, again, the same thing is true here. We're gonna press the button for a certain number of seconds and it's going to unload that filament. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and it's, it's, it's actually unloading it right now. As long as I'm holding this button, it's unloading. When I'm done unloading, I get it to the point where I wanna stop, I let off the button. It's now switched to filament two and it's waiting for another button press. The button press for this one is actually going to load filament two for whatever length of time I'm holding this button. Typically, if I unload it, I'm going to load it plus one second. So if I unload it for 20 seconds, I'm going to load it for 21 seconds. And the reason why we do that is that very last second, what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the extruder motor, okay? And we're going to have them both loading at the exact same time. Um, that way the extruder motor is running and the 3D Chameleon is driving the filament. What that allows us to do is it allows us to, to assist the loading process and then once that last final second is over, we pause, we let go of the filament here, and then we allow the stock extruder to resume loading the filament the rest of the way. So let's go ahead and load the filament, and it's, it's running the motor again, and it'll, it'll do that again as long as I'm holding it. And then when I'm done, we're, we, we just let off of it. And, and now it's ready for the next filament change. So this 3D Chameleon is working perfectly. Uh, let's go ahead and install it now. So what I'm going to do is uh, disconnect the power here. And there are two installation steps that we're going to take here. The first one is I'm going to go ahead and install the switch here. The switch is going to be mounted inside the unit here. And I'm just going to line these two holes up with the two screws that I just put in here. And I'm just going to screw them in to the back of it. That feels lined up. actually was lined up perfectly. So I can just go ahead and tighten these down now. And in the video here, I will grab some uh, detailed pictures of these, these installation points for you just to insert them so you have a little zoomed view of it. But we're just gonna tighten those down. You don't need to go too incredibly tight. Um, and don't worry if the switch kind of moves around a little bit. It's actually, as long as it clears the uh, bottom of the, uh, uh, as long as the uh, extruder head can come over and touch the bottom of the switch, it'll be fine. This is working beautifully. So I'm gonna take this. We're just gonna run this back here. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take some of my tape. I have a little bit of black tape here. I really, really like this uh, black cloth 
tape. It's not, it's not electrical tape. It's a, it's just a black cloth. And I'm just going to use it to hold down my wire here. It blends in nicely with this uh, printer frame. on this side again I'll I'll get some good pictures of this for you but that black cloth does a really nice job of uh, holding and hiding um, so that's really good okay so our uh, cable to our electronics you can plug that right back in actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cables out of these for now because we're going to go ahead and mount everything to our base plate so to do that i'm going to take the lid off the electronics and inside the electronics there are uh, two m3 screws holding these two t-nuts on the back we're just going to take the two t-nuts off we're going to push out those two black M3 screws. On our chameleon mount, there are eight screws and a uh, rectangle, and then there's two screws up here by themselves. We're gonna put the two screws in the back side here, the bottom side, uh, where the recesses are for the heads. And we're just gonna screw them into place. I'm just gonna use my, uh, my 2.5 millimeter to drive them all the way in. So now I'll just twist them. Just crank those all the way down so that the screw head is flush with the bottom of the plate here. That's good. Once I have that done, I'm going to take my electronics and just mount them over the two screws that I have protruding from the front there. And by, by doing that, that's holding that in place for a little bit. We're just going to push the electronics all the way in Make sure the screw's coming through all the way. And we're gonna take our T-nuts that we took off and we're gonna put them on the front side, on the inside of the electronics here. And those are gonna hold them in place. So by putting that there, I can screw this in. That's going to hold that in place. We'll do that for both sides. So we're going to take we're going to take the in our bag here we have four 35 millimeter m3 screws we're going to take our 3d chameleon and we're going to remove the center four screws here uh, don't worry nothing will fall apart when you do this those out okay 
Okay, we're gonna take our uh, base plate here and the 3D Chameleon, and we're gonna take the tubes and we're gonna put the tubes on this side, opposite of the electronics. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna line this up and the, these screws standing proud will fit into these holes on the outer four corners of this. And they'll just snap right into place there. We're going to take our 35 millimeter screws and just drop them into those four open holes in the middle. Okay, so that's got the 3D Chameleon mounted to the top here. Uh, we'll go ahead and put our cover back on it here. And we can go ahead and plug our wiring back in. So the wire's coming out, are lined up. And just plug them right back into the holes they came from. Remember, remember which one came from which hole. And we'll plug these in here. And we'll test this in a second just to make sure we got it right. And we have our switch here. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Okay, it's plugged in. We'll plug the, elect the power into the electronics. And let's go ahead and touch the button here to see which motor vibrates. Good, we have it exactly right. So we're done with this part of the installation. We're done with this part of the installation. The rest of this, we're gonna take this spool holder. My bag is tied over the top of it here. So our, our electronics are gonna, and our chameleon is going to sit right here on the front of the spool holder. like that. Oh, I have my wire tangled. There we go. So that's going to go right there. And with this here, we now just need to hook up the PTFE tube, our PTFE Y adapter to the PTFE tube to feed it in. To do that, um, we're going to do two things. First off, we're going to remove the short tube that's in our tube. And you don't have to, I mean, if you have the other couple, you can actually leave it on there. That just, it just makes it a longer distance. That's, you know, an additional four seconds loading and unloading every color change. So again, every second you can shave is better. So we'll take this and we'll stick that right in there. Now the last thing that we have is we have this uh, big length of PTFE tube. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, cut the zip tie holding it together. We'll remove that. And you can see we have a pretty long distance here that we don't need. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove each one of these. And to remove those, by the way, you just press the little black piece plastic inward and that you'll hear it, you'll feel it click and then the tube will just pull out. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna take these, place this where we want it, find the optimal length for these, and that looks like it's gonna be right about there. So we're gonna cut this much off. So with that said, we're gonna take our utility knife and we're just gonna slice these to the appropriate length. 
and you can find any suitable hard surface, including the back of the motor works good. And we're just gonna slice them off one by one. I've uh, sliced those lengths off and we'll take this and just take two any they don't the order in which these plug in it doesn't make any difference you can make them a line up however you want but just slide them in when you slide these in you want to make sure that the PTFE tube goes all the way through the PTFE connector inside of here and into the pocket inside the green. You want to make sure that that occurs. Um, that way it feeds correctly into the pocket that's inside here that guides it through there. And so now I put my uh, spool holder back together and that's it. We just completed the entire installation of the 3D Chameleon onto the P1P. We've got it in mode three. The machine commands this what to do. And you're good to go. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to load, uh, properly load the filament into this, as well as how to use the bamboo slicer, the G-code profile that we have available that you can download from the same page where you downloaded all of this stuff. Uh, the, uh, we have a P1P mode three profile specifically for this installation. By the way, that same profile will also work on that X1C, but you wanna be careful. We also have an X1C profile that doesn't always work on the P1P uh, because of uh, some of the advanced features that the P1P doesn't have that the X1C does. Um, but the P1P profile will work on both machines without any modifications. You just will have to tune it for the, uh, uh, their LiDAR scanning and things like that. But that's it, that's the installation, very simple. Two screws to hold the switch on, two screws to hold the switch on to the printer, the switch mount, um, two screws to hold the electronics to the base plate, four screws to hold the 3D Chameleon to the base plate, and basically snapping the spool holder together, you're done, that's it. That's all there is. Thanks for watching. Again, feel free to send me any time an email at bill at 3dchameleon.com, I'll answer any questions you have. Thanks.